Hey guys, Peter James here, I hope you're doing well. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a keyboard player, producer, sound designer. I've had the privilege of playing on over 40 Hillsong United and Hillsong Worship albums over the years, as well as touring with them. Um, and more recently, I've gotten into sound designing even more and had my sounds feature on a ton of TV series and movies like The Walking Dead, The Purge, The Bachelorette, The Bachelor, um, The Morning Show and a bunch of other ones. But I say all that to say this, um, I'm a sound designer. That's what I do. I create sounds, I create templates, um, and this is my live template. So yeah, let's jump in. So what you're looking at here is my live template. This is the Complete Worship Bundle 2 Pro. It has all my presets for all my third-party plugins, instruments, effects, um, what I'm using on my output on my bus, um, everything. Um, this is my live template. Um, I wanted to make it available to anyone that wanted it, but I do realize that not everyone's going to own all the plugins that I do. Um, so the Complete Worship Bundle 2 Pro actually comes with two templates. It comes with this version you're seeing in front of you, as well as the main stage only version. Um, and in that version, the Complete Worship Bundle 2, I've replicated all of these effects um, in main stage and it doesn't require any third party plugins. Um, so that way, depending on what plugins you do own, you can make a hybrid of both of them um, and fill in the gaps. You may not even want to use the Complete Worship Bundle 2 Pro in this main stage template. You may already have a template that you really like and you like the layout and how it all works. Um, I've exported all of these patches as single patches and sets of patches and multis um, so you can use them um, in your own template and port them into your own main stage template or use them in Logic. There's also Logic uh, patches for all these as well. As well as getting the two templates, the Complete Worship Bundle 2 and the Complete Worship Bundle 2 Pro, um, there's also a main stage masterclass that comes with this using the Complete Worship Bundle. So I go through and talk about um, buffer settings, how to get the best buffer settings for your computer. I talk about uh, RAM management and using aliases to limit um, using too much RAM in your template. I'll talk about um, importing, exporting patches, all of that kind of stuff, all the technical stuff that I don't want to have to do in this video. I'm just going to do a quick overview explaining the different sections um, and explaining kind of the layout and how I have everything um, set out and kind of the workflow of this template and then we'll get into audio examples. So at the top we've got um, ambient drones. Uh, we've got three different ambient drones now in this version. OB Ambient Pads which is currently the best selling ambient pads on multitracks which is really cool to see so I thought well I have to include that one um, and I love it. My OB6 is an amazing analog keyboard. So that ambient drones in there. There's also the atmospheric ambient pads which is kind of the one that I default to most of the time. It's um, string-based pizzicato with reverb and everything. It almost sounds like a guitar picking. That's my kind of default that I go to. And then we've got another one which complements those other two sonically. It's um, Dream Shimmer. So it's uh, got a lot of octave shimmer on it. Um, and you can mix those in exactly how you want to. Obviously, you've got control over your high-pass filter, how much bottom end's in there. You can add extra reverb, extra octave shimmer on top of the reverb. You've got motion, which is a slow um, auto pan going left and right. You can add pulse to that if you want, uh, bring some rhythm into your ambient pad. And then you've got this width, which is really handy because it takes the ambient pad out of the center and moves it to the side, more left and right, uh, making room for your um, main pianos and everything to stick through a little bit more. Um, so that's the ambient drone section. You trigger um, whatever key, all 12 keys at the bottom and then um, just select it and then hit the play button to start them and stop them. Um, I should also mention that all these ambient pads are now infinite. Um, they're looped, so you're never going to um, be in a situation where they cut out. You can see in the top right hand section you've got drawbars for your organ. Um, and then this is the nano control layout. Um, there was a stage where I was using flying faders on United Tours and I ended up getting what was available at the time, a Behringer controller um, with flying faders. It was big, it was bulky, but it ended up breaking, I think, three of them. And then I was like, oh, stuff this. I'm just going to go back to the Korg Nano controller. Never had any problems with it. Uh, small, compact, um, never broke. So I was like, okay, flying faders are great. Um, but for consistency and something that's reliable, I'm currently using the Korg Nano Control 2. So that kind of explains why it looks like a Korg Nano Controller, because that's what I've got sitting in front of me. Um, and I want kind of the layout to look like the hardware um, that I'm using. So that's um, how that works. 
So before I talk about um, the layout on the Korg Nano Control uh, settings here, I want to talk a little bit about the philosophy behind why I designed my template like I have. So obviously I've been doing worship and playing with um, United and Hillsong Worship for over 20 years now. And the biggest thing I've found in worship, it's not about doing song one, then stopping, and then doing song two, then stopping, then song. Obviously, a worship set is a worship set. It's not about a whole lot of individual songs. It's about crafting a set. Um, the last thing you want to do with um, sounds and patches is to have to stop one patch and start a new one because you've got a new song. You want to be able to access every type of sonic quality from just a few patches. Um, there's a lot of templates out there and a lot of patches, um, but for me, it's all about, like I said, being able to access anything you want at any given time. So you can morph between one sound to another. You can have a bright piano for a... Um, like, for example, a Young and Free song that requires really compressed, bright octave piano lines. Then you want to be able to morph that piano into a subtle, warm, big sounding um, piano for a worship song and be able to add reverb, make it ambient, put delays on it. Um, and then, for example, going from the end of your worship set into MC moment, you might want to go, OK, I want to go from a piano to a Rhodes. But what if I wanted to blend the piano and the Rhodes together? or even do a crossfade between the two. Basically, that's how I've designed the template. You have access to pretty much everything all at your fingertips without having to stop a patch and start another one. Um, so let me explain that a little bit better. The main instruments here, um, you've got your grand piano, you've got Unicorder Felt in the Pro version, um, Rhodes, Whirly, this is actually a Prophet 5 Whirly with Big Sky um, Reverb. Then you've got Organ. And you can access all of those from any patch below that. So any of these multis, um, you can, except for the single patches, obviously at the very bottom, um, but all the multis have access to all of those main instruments. And you can blend all those instruments together. So you can have a felt and a Rhodes together, or you can have an organ and a grand piano. And then you can have the Grand Piano Mellow um, by using the Low Pass Filter 1. So basically you've got access to everything at your fingertips. To be honest, you could get away with just using this one analog multi um, for your whole set. You've got access to, like I said, your piano, your roads, everything. Um, you've got um, a Profit 5 Drive Pad. You've got another Profit Pad. You've got an OB6 Pad. You've got a, a Profit big sky wet version if you want an ambient version you've got uh, leads um, you've got access to delays and reverbs um, you've got access obviously to your ambient pads with a touch of a button you could do your whole set just with this one patch okay so let's start off with the piano the grand piano here um, you've got options to make it brighter um, add a compressor um, it actually goes between two different compressors. One's a more aggressive one and one's uh, more natural. You can add the octave thing to your piano. So you play one note and it adds an octave above. Um, in this effects section, you've got the option to add delay and reverb to anything that's uh, routed out low pass filter one, which is the grand piano um, and all of these ones here. There's actually two low pass filters. Um, I like the option to have them separate. So I can like have a bright piano and then a mellow pad. Um, just gives me a little bit more control over crafting my sounds. Um, we've got dotted and eighth um, delays. You've got the ability to put reverb on just your delays, um, which is a little trick that I've uh, been doing for quite a few years. I love doing that for kind of ambient delays. Um, this is the effects pre button, which um, I love. Basically what it does is it sends um, anything going out low pass filter one, like my grand piano, to the effects section before the low pass filter. So if I turn the low pass filter all the way um, off, um, it's still gonna go through my reverbs and delays. So you can get um, a really ambient reverby piano um, and create kind of ambient pads with that without having to change patches. So that's a really cool little feature that I love about this. Um, you've got your tap tempo. Um, obviously that's self-explanatory. Um, this room, you can add this to anything that's routed through low pass filter one, which is my grand and my felt, felt piano, roads, um, etc. Um, and that's actually, uh, 
impulse response from the Hillsong studio. I went in there and sampled a bunch of different um, impulse responses from the room. So anything you put through this um, room um, effect makes it sound like it was recorded in the Hillsong studio, basically. And it's great to just put a little bit of air around your sound. Um, but it's not a really long reverb, so it doesn't mush up it, kind of your sound. It just makes it sound bigger and fuller without it sounding mushy. Um, that's from the Hillsong Studio IRs. They're on multi-tracks if you're wanting a full bundle of them. Um, but I've just picked a really short one, which works well for these main instruments. So I'll start off with this grand piano, just start moving some of these knobs and sliders and show you what you can get from one piano sound. kind of got a little bit carried away there. Um, I'm an explorer. <laughs> That's one of my personality traits. So I love creating, exploring sounds and trying to work out different ways of expressing myself uh, musically and sonically um, by exploring basically and experimenting. Um, and so I wanted to at least give you kind of a taste of what you can do with this. Um, that was just kind of off the fly, I didn't plan what I was going to play. Um, but you can see how you can make the piano bright, really punchy, then mellow, then atmospheric, then put delay on it, um, then have only the, the delay and reverb coming through. Um, I could have gone a step further and started to filter in like the felt piano on top of the grand piano, which gives you the really nice fat, mellow sound. So let's go to the felt. Um, I've set up it by default to work really well with other instruments. So I've got the dark EQ on, um, I've got a reverse effect that you can add to it. Um, and this is really cool. So this is the Noir, I think that's how you pronounce it, from Native Instruments. But I've got it set up as a warm pad. So you can basically have a piano warm pad that you can mix in with your piano. So what I'll do is it doesn't really uh, work well by itself. It's designed to work with a piano. So um, I might play a couple of chords without the piano so you get a sonic idea of what it is. And you can tweak all of this. It's got kind of uh, delays and reverb um, tails on it. But I'm not going to show you all that in this video. I'm just going to show you a, qu a quick overview. Um, then I'll bring that piano in and show you kind of how it makes the piano big and fat and gives you kind of a piano pad behind it.
So it's really subtle, but it just makes your piano sound big, fat, warm with that kind of nice ambience behind it. So that's uh, one that I love kind of pairing up with my grand piano. And that's why I've got it um, set on that um, button as well. So you can access it from um, two locations and it makes it handy once you start mixing them with other um, patches down there. You've got access to adding the noir pad and other effects um, with other patches. Okay, um, let's go on to the felt. Um, I've designed this one by default to be a dark setting. Um, again, this one works really well with other patches, so I'll play it by itself and then mix it in with the roads and piano and just show you um, kind of how I like to use it anyway in this template. So that's a small taste of what you can do with the felt and just mix it in uh, with other instruments. I'll move on to the roads. Um, this one's really um, cool because I've got a bunch of different things you can do with this. Um, I've got a delay that actually, when that's turned on, you get the exact preset that I use for Forever Rain. Um, and it's really cool. You can add more or less of the PS5 um, delay reverb. It's actually a really cool plugin, um, but I have emulated this in the Complete Worship Bundle 2 um, one, the exact same routing with it, um, the delay going through reverb and overdrive um, if you don't have this plugin um, or you want to save money. But I'll show you um, what it sounds like here. I started with the kind of Forever Rain preset and then like I've done for the other ones, just start um, adding delays and reverbs and things um, and show you what you can do with it.
You can also obviously get it sounding more natural and um, like I do use it a lot for MC moments where you want kind of more upbeat um, kind of vibe um, and I'll just quickly play you something like that. So this whirly is actually a Prophet 5 sample. Um, it's not a real whirly, it's a Prophet 5 whirly and I've bounced the dry signal through my big sky as well and created completely wet versions which I love. Um, I use the dry, sorry I use the wet version probably more than I use a dry and I um, partner that up with like Rhodes and Grand Piano um, and also pads and everything because it gives me kind of a ambient reverb um, lead. Um, yeah, anyway, enough of me talking, let's just play it. Um, I'll go dry, then wet, um, and then I'll mix it in with some of the other uh, main instruments to show you uh, what it sounds like. So with the whirly you can see there, um, the wet version is routed out the low pass filter 2 and the dry version out low pass filter 1. It just gives me a little bit more control over the brightness of the dry and the wet um, and it means I can put effects on the grand piano, the roads, the felt, um, etc. without it affecting the wet whirly versions. So anyway, um, let's go on to the organ. And by default, I've set the organ up to be quite mellow. You can see there's a dark EQ on it and reverb because I use it more like a pad with a main instrument. So I'll show you what it sounds like by itself and then I'll mix it in with other instruments as well and show you uh, what that sounds like. So that's the organ, like I said I've set it up to be quite mellow, um, you can obviously change the drawbar settings, I've got a YC88 with drawbar um, control sitting in front of me which I can 
um, obviously change the draw bar settings on the fly. Um, so that's the organ, um, how I've set up in the main instruments. I'll go down and show you um, the organ by itself, brighter settings if you want more of a gospel thing. Um, but those are the main instruments. Um, and like I said, you can mix any of these main instruments with any of the patches below. I'm going to quickly show you these. All the sounds are up on multi-tracks, um, so you can um, hear them individually. I'm just trying to do a quick uh, walkthrough video uh, showing you just some of the main ones in here. So anyway, um, this is the Analog Multi Plus. Um, it has a bunch of Prophet 5, OB6, um, Big Sky leads everything. Um, this one actually has uh, Juno 60 samples. These are all my custom samples from my analog gear. Um, recently got a Juno 60, so I've sampled that. Um, there's Juno 60 leads and everything. Um, so I'll do a quick um, play of the Analog Multi Plus um, and then jump down and show you these other ones and then just show you how you can mix in um, some of these main instruments too. So there you go, that's just a quick um, overview of that. Obviously you can use the patches individually or all together, I just use them all together for that quick audio example. Anyway, um, that's a quick overview of that one. I'll show you the um, Analog Multi Plus. Um, and I'll show you this setting too. Actually, I'll show you this first. I've set up a script inside MainStage that can let you basically freeze any pad. Um, I've just set it up on the main pads that I like to use it with, um, but I'm always trying new stuff and I thought this is a really cool feature to basically turn any pad into an ambient pad and just have it freeze. So what I'll do now is just take down these other ones and just show you just the um, P5 Big Sky um, freezing it. What it does is it blocks MIDI. Um, so if you hold a chord down with the sustain pedal um, on, and then hit the no MIDI, it's going to sustain um, until you uh, click that button again. So I'll quickly show you that. So that's just a quick um, example of how you can use that um, to sustain it, then play a piano over top. Obviously you've got access to all the ambient pad drones as well, which you can trigger, but it's just kind of an added feature I wanted to um, put in there um, if you wanted to sustain um, your pad or your notes. You can obviously play any chord you want, sustain it however you want, um, and then it'll just keep sustaining, looping indefinitely until you hit the no MIDI button. Um, let's show you the Juno pad and um, everything in this one. So 
So a nice uh, warm Juno 60 pad. Um, let's quickly go down to this one. Um, actually, let's just skip to the bottom one. It has um, both Juno leads in it, um, and it lets you do um, kind of United style um, big Juno lead um, riffs and stuff. So really love this patch. Okay, um, let's go down to this res filter sweep. This is more of an effect um, thing that I like to use. Again, you can um, hold all the MIDI notes if you want to use it as a transition um, into another song, but you don't want that to move when you're playing a piano part or whatever. And basically, it's just a huge um, Profit 5 res filter sweep. So that's just a quick example of one way you could use it. Um, I like to use it in Young and Free songs, just kind of like a really cool um, analog resonance sweepy effect thing uh, for that as well. Okay, um, let's go down to um, the Waterfall B3 organ. And I'll show you a little bit more of what this organ can do. Um, I've got it set with the first three drawbars out, which is the same setting I use for Firefall Down. Um, for that song, I used a real Hammond C3 uh, through a 147 Leslie, I think it was. Um, but anyway, there's two versions. There's one that relies on... Um, these, which works really good for me because I've got a YC88 and I can control the drawbars with that. But if you don't um, have an additional controller, you can access the drawbars with the nano controller um, settings here. Um, so whichever one you prefer. Um, this is a really great emulation. It's by UAD. Um, they've really nailed the Leslie, I feel. Um, but if you don't want this plugin or um, you just want to use the main stage one, the main stage organ's, organ's actually really, really good. Um, surprisingly, for a free organ that comes with main stage, um, it is really, really good. Um, but I'm going to do a separate walkthrough video for the Complete Worship Bundle 2 native main stage version. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'm using in my live template. So that's kind of the setting that I'd use for more kind of rock, but you can obviously get more gospel jazz settings by adjusting your drawbars. Um, for that kind of thing, you might want to bring in some of the top drawbars, um, something like this, um, and then a chorus. Um, so I'll just muck around with that and see what that sounds like. Um, again, because it's going through low pass filter 1, you can actually add the Hillsong um, Studio Reverb on top of it, which makes it sound a little bit more natural, um, so I'll quickly do that. <laughs> So 
So yeah, um, that room just makes everything sound um, bigger and more alive and more natural. Um, so you can put that on anything, obviously, um, but it's great to kind of make any instrument, um, especially a main instrument, sound more authentic. Okay, so let's move on to the Complete Worship Bundle 1 Multi. So these are all the patches that were included in the first version of the Complete Worship Bundle. Um, I've gone through everything and tweaked and improved them, um, and the biggest change, obviously, is having access to all the main instruments for any of these patches. So I'll just be quick, most of you have probably already heard these before um, and they're all up on multi-tracks anyway if you want to hear um, detailed audio examples of the Complete Worship Bundle 1 multis as well as all the other ones. Um, another thing I'll mention is I haven't included all the single patches in this template because uh, for the sake of having too many patches in one template and uh, maxing out the RAM. I've kept all the single patches out, but you can pull them all in um, as well. And if I go to the very top, you'll also notice there's a main stage instruments empty. So what this is, is an empty version of the multi. It means that you can pull in any um, single patches and make your own multi. You can pull in um, any of your own patches and kind of create um, your own custom multi with access to all of those main stage instruments. You don't have to remap them, don't have to do anything, just add your own patches and you can duplicate that as many times as you want. And so you have all your main instruments um, being able to be partnered with any sounds, new sounds or um, these sounds that you pull into the template. Okay, so Interstellar Dreams 1, um, this is the patch. I might chuck in the Whirly Wet as well and show you how you can kind of mix that in as well. I forgot to mention as well that I have the low pass filter mapped to the mod wheel for all of these patches. You've probably been noticing the mod wheel moving up and down in the lower um, left hand corner here. Um, that's affecting the low pass filter, but you've also got that secondary low pass filter um, that you can set. Um, it means you can kind of set a limit to how bright it gets if you want to and push your mod wheel all the way up. Um, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility too. Um, you could even turn off. Um, in the patches, the low pass filter being mapped to the mod wheel and only use this is really up to you how you use it, but that's how I use it, so I want to give it to you obviously exactly the same way that I use it. Um, let's just go down to uh, Young and Free Multi. Like I said, they're all up on multi tracks. You can um, go and listen to these audio examples um, on their own. Um, but yeah, I love this patch. I added a little bit more drive to um, the young and free bass for this one. So I just want to quickly show you that one.
So I'm going to finish off showing you these bonus patches. These patches are exclusive to the pro version um, and they're bonus patches because they're not essential to this template but they are in my live templates. So I wanted to give you the exact template that I'm using in Hillsong Church and that includes these patches. So if you do own Omnisphere, Synth 1, uh, UVI, Modern Upright, uh, you'll get these bonus patches obviously that you can use. Um, in your template. So I'll start off with Analog Dreams Multi. This is for Omnisphere. Um, it actually uses a sound that I created for Omnisphere 2's factory presets and it's popped up on a bunch of TV series and movies over the years but I love to use it for worship, um, kind of like a reverby ambient reversed bell sound. But anyway I'll show you what it sounds like um, in this audio example. So this next one uses UVI's Modern Upright. Um, I chose this one because it's actually the identical model that we use in our Hillsong Studio. So you would have heard this modeled piano um, recorded on a lot of Hillsong uh, United and Hillsong Worship albums, especially the new ones. Um, and so this is a model basically of that. It's a great sample of that piano. Um, and so because I wanted um, obviously the same kind of sound as we record in the studio, that's why I've got this one. So I'll just go through again, um, tweak a few little things, add some chorus. Um, you can get everything from a big, bright, upright piano, um, like a show for the grand, but then you can make it mellow, um, add some of the Hillsong studio uh, room reverb to it. And it sounds like it was actually recorded in the Hillsong studio. So here we go. So there you go, that's the upright. You can get kind of bright and honky tonk and um, really bluesy if you want, all the way down to dark and chorusy. Um, just added some delay at the very end, uh, turned that um, 18th delay into um, a ping pong left and right rather than straight down the middle. So you've got control over all of that live, um, which is really handy to have. Um, let's go to this sidechain Omnisphere patch. Um, I use this a lot um, for young and free songs and obviously anything upbeat.
actually forgot to turn the room off, but it sounds good um, with it or without. If you want a more drier sound, you obviously just turn that room off. I'll quickly show it to you with it off. Okay, so let's go down to the Solenth 1 patch. Um, there's a lot of um, controllable features with this one. Resonance, low-pass filter. Um, you're probably wondering why is there a separate resonance and low-pass filter. That's because it's affecting the Solenth um, low-pass filter, not the main stage low-pass filter, which is uh, a more generic one. Um, just got a little bit more control over it uh, to make it more prominent. So here we go. So that's a really cool, fun kind of um, trance lead. Obviously great for um, dance, great for a bunch of Young and Free songs uh, that we do. Okay, so this next one is uh, kind of an ARP Omnisphere patch going through Omicide, which is a multi-band aggressive overdrive plugin. It pops whenever I go to it, which is really annoying. I tried everything to try to eliminate that by having it muted by default and everything, but whatever I did, it, the pops somehow keeps making its way through so it must be a bug in the plugin hope they fix it but for now I've just got a pop warning so if you are going to use this plugin and you have the effects um, this homicide effect um, before you go to it just take the master volume down um, switch to it and then you won't hear it so here we go So yeah, a really cool kind of aggressive ARP uh, patch that I love using live on Young and Free songs and stuff. So I almost forgot to show you the UVI Retro Organ patches. So these are also bonus patches. You don't need obviously two organs in a template, but I wanted to give you a couple of options for organs. Um, the UVI Retro Organ Suite is what I've been using for the longest time. It's a complete sample of a tone wheel organ. It's a B3, I think, through a 122 uh, Leslie, but it's been completely sampled all the way down to the Leslie, whereas the UAD Waterfall B3, it's kind of a, a hybrid, I think. Um, of sampled individual drawbar settings and Leslie simulation, um, preamp simulation, etc, etc. So there's benefits to both. Um, obviously the UVI sounds really authentic because it's a complete sample, whereas the Universal Audio one gives you more control. You've got drawbar um, setting control that you can change on the fly. You've got uh, ramp up and ramp down Leslie um, simulation, which doesn't get captured in the UVI because they had to sample the slow rotor speed and the fast and then you cross fade between the two. So there's benefits to both. Um, I've given you both options. So depending on which um, organ software you own or which one you may wanna purchase in the future, uh, you've got my presets for both. Um, because the UVI organ is a complete sample, they've sampled separate drawbar settings in different patches. So I've set it up as you can see here to kind of go through my favorite progression of drawbar settings. So if I want a mellow sound, I start off with the top and it gets progressively uh, more aggressive as you bring in more drawbars towards the end. So I'll quickly show you that, um, how that all works. I'll do it without the Hillsong Studio Reverb and then kind of add some as I go along uh, to give you a vibe for how it feels with that.
So a little bit of a different approach to an organ plugin, like I said, um, you don't have control over the drawbar settings. Um, the ramp up and ramp down speed you don't have, you're doing a crossfade between the slow and fast with the mod wheel, um, and that's why there's not a button uh, for the Leslie rotor because you kind of have to crossfade it so you need um, something that's not on off you need a slider which obviously the uh, mod wheel comes in handy for that um, but yeah so if you do own the UVI retro organ suite um, there will be all these presets for it in the pro version you don't have to have both organs obviously I'm just giving you options so yeah that's the comparison between the retro organ suite and the waterfall b3 from UAD um, so that's the walkthrough video. I hope that really helped. Obviously this product comes with um, a masterclass video as well and I go through kind of all the details in the complete worship bundle um, that I might have skipped over here. Um, all the routing, how to get the best out of it, um, buffer settings, um, aliases, how to um, kind of manage your RAM, um, a bunch of other mainstage tricks and tips and everything um, that I wish I'd kind of known when I first started using mainstage. Um, like I said before, you get two templates. If you get the Pro, you get the one that I've just shown you, and you also get the native mainstage version that doesn't require any third party plugins. Um, that way you can kind of make a hybrid depending on what plugins you own. Um, and in that main stage masterclass video, I'm going to go through all the plugins and kind of show you which ones I think are really essential and which ones you can do without. I don't want people to think they have to buy every single plugin and software instrument that I own. Um, so I'm going to go into detail about all that. Also, I should mention if you're an owner of the original Complete Worship Bundle, um, you should get an email from Multitracks giving you an upgrade price. But if for some reason you don't, just email them at support at multitracks.com and they'll give you the um, upgrade price. Uh, so yeah, just do that. Reach out with your account details and let them know and they'll uh, send you um, that upgrade price. I think that's everything. So that's the walkthrough video. Um, there's going to be a walkthrough video to the native version that I'll put in the description as well. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I'm not just saying that. Um, you supporting me helps me continue to do what I'm doing, um, providing you with my sounds that I'm using at church, uh, templates, um, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, really appreciate your support. So yeah, that's it from me. Until next time, uh, see ya.